Yes. Mm -hmm. I will call the Cookville City Council meeting for March 5th to order. May I have a roll call, please? Councilman Wombach? Here. Councilman Miller? Here. Mayor Shelton? Vice Mayor Wheaton? Here. Councilman Walker? Here. Four present, one absent. James, can speak? Um, so this is uh, probably the most tragic time we've had in, in Cookville, Putnam County. I know it has been since I've lived here and I moved here in the 80s. Um, before we get started, I know a lot of people have been impacted by this, but we've had numerous city employees, their families have been impacted by this. Um, but I've had been, it's been questioned today, why should we meet? Of course, we lost Jessica Clark. And Monday, the last thing she worked on was getting together for tonight's meeting. So we're going to meet for Jessica. Um, my heart's broken losing her, um, but I also wanted to recognize just the, the employees that have lost, some have lost everything. I mean, this has hit us, every department's been hit. In the general department, we've lost Jessica, but Tammy Tucker has lost her home. She's severely injured. Shane Brooks has lost his home, everything he has. The electric department, Glenn Greenwood and Karen Brown both have home damage. The fire department, Brandon Lee's lost everything. Sean Hotspiller, Mike Brown, and retiree Roger Fuqua's family members have homes have been damaged. The police department, Officer Craig Ragsdale, has lost his home. His daughter's got a broken leg. And I was, met with him yesterday. And he was more of an inspiration to me than I was for him. He just talked about how God had blessed him and protected his family through this. Dust, Justin Long's home's been damaged, and retiree Barbara Stewart, her home's been heavily damaged. David Long in the gas department, his home was right on the edge of one of the most devastated areas I've seen out there in West Haven. His house has been damaged. In leisure services, Kim Frick Welker, Michael Cage, Steve Loftus, Bradley West, and James Qualls. All have had damage and are out without power. In the planning department, Haley Dixon, who just came to work for us a few minutes, a few months ago, her parents' home was in West Haven. It's completely gone. Her dad's in, in Vanderbilt with um, severe injuries. Public Works Department, Blake Heron's home was damaged, and Timmy Lee's home was destroyed. So I would ask y'all if we could just take a, 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 and I know there's many, many other people that are hurt and, and, and have lost loved ones and have lost property. But I'd like for us to take just a moment of silence to remember our people, the city of Cookville people. And that doesn't even go to talk about all our guys and gals that are out there the, working there. 12, 14 hour shifts, our police, our fire, our utility guys, Greg's guys, Greg's utility, Greg's workers, stuff, stuff that they're not supposed to be doing. you know moving rubble to recover bodies and this is hard stuff folks and i'd ask us to just take a moment here uh, of silence just to contemplate all this thank you james for that Thank you. At this time, I'll ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. On uh, item three, consider approval of agenda as presented. Are there any changes? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'd like to make a uh, request one change to the agenda. Um, it would be add as 7E um, relative to debris cleanup and would authorize uh, the city manager to neg negotiate some contracts. But I'd ask that you amend the agenda to add 7E. There's a motion for the amended agenda. So moved. moved. Second. Motion's been second. Any discussion? I vote. Four yes votes. Motion carried. 
on uh, item 5a old business consider approval of minutes of council meeting held on february 20 2020 is there a motion so moved second motion is second any discussion i'll vote four yes votes motion carries item 5b consider on second and final reading ordinance 0200102 closure of the alley located between 64 east first street and 204 cherry avenue mr ward thank you vice mayor wheaton and council members um I do want to report on second reading that both property owners that are party to the request will each acquire one half of the alley, alley that's contiguous with, to their respective properties. The ordinance will be void if the property owners don't finalize this acquisition with, uh, of the surplus property request within 90 days. And I recommend your approval on second and final reading. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? I'll vote. Four yes votes. Motion carries. 6A, the consent agenda set a date 4 20 for a public hearing on ordinance 02 rezoning of 1901, 1913, and 1919 North Washington Avenue from CL Local Commercial and 420, 430, 502, 512, and 518 East Jerry Whitson Road from RS10 Single Family Residential to RM14 Multifamily Residential. Is there a motion on uh, 6A? So moved. Second. It's been seconded. Any discussion? All vote. Four yes votes. Motion carries. Right, 6B set a date 4220 for a public hearing on ordinance 0200304. Amendment to the zoning code to include microbreweries and brew pubs is permitted use in the CI uh, commercial industrial mixed use district and include brew pubs in the PCD. Did you already do the commercial? Nope. Uh, I've done A. You did B. You're right. Oh, we usually do them both at the same time. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, motion? Oops. So moved. Second. Motion <coughs> second on the consent agenda. Any, any discussion? All vote. Five yes, folks. Motion Thank carries. You. Under new business 7A, consider authorizing the city manager to submit application for renewal for a VOCA grant. Police Department. Chief Evans. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, this is just renewing a VOCA grant that we currently have. It expires in June. This funds our uh, witness, uh, uh, victim's witness uh, coordinator. Uh, this grant comes through the Office of Criminal Justice Programs. Uh, the grant amount, as you can see there, uh, is funding uh, for salary and training for 2021 is $57,656.45. For 2022, $54,773.63. Our responsibility is a 20% match. Uh, we've been able to meet that match with supervisory salary and also in kind uh, through <coughs> volunteers uh, specifically interns from university uh, recommend your approval is there a motion so so moved. second motion second Any discussion i'll vote five yes votes motion carries seven b consider approval of emergency repair of raw water pump number three at the water plant water quality department ronnie kelly mayor and council uh, back in uh, I think it was early 18, we had a 700 kVA transformer in VFD for one of our high service pumps at the, at the lake, failed. Uh, we finally got it re replaced and back in line in September of 18. Uh, when we reconnected everything and the motor, started the motor back up, it was drawing too many amps, so we shut it back down. We contacted two electrical companies to come try to determine what the problem was with the motor. They could not determine it, so we Ended up contacting John Bouchard Company out of Nashville to come up. They had worked on prior pumps and motor problems for us before. Uh, they ended up repairing the motor, and <coughs> during startup of that reinstallation, figured out we had a pump issue also. All, all three, three, all three tied together. So we asked them while they were there to go ahead and pull the pump, take it back to their shop, and and evaluate it and make us a recommendation. Uh, after they evaluated it, we uh, made a decision to go ahead and rebuild, have a complete rebuild. It was 12 years old and had lost, lost some of its capacity. So we finally got that installed and it's working. Every, all three parts and pieces are working like they're supposed to. Uh, the final invoice is $52,341.71. That's the motors. Can't see the pumps. They're underwater. And that's parts of the impellers and so forth that's on the pumping underwater so but I'd recommend approval 
Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? I have one question. Uh, I just want to make clear that, that that was an old repair prior to anything that happened and involves the water station. Everything is up and running. Everything's good up and, and running. And has been, and we're, this is an old invoice. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Any other comments? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carried. Thank you. 7C, consider awarding bid for 2020 water line leak survey services. Uh, Ronnie Kelly. Mayor and Council, we opened. Uh, uh, took proposals on water leak survey annually and we received four bids. Richards LMC was the low bidder and would recommend approval. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion. Thank came. you. 7D received the final Dogwood Park Master Plan for Leisure Services. Rick Woods. Thank you, Mayor and members of Council. Um, you will uh, recall that uh, back late last summer, we, uh, you asked us to uh, engage with uh, HFR Design to uh, do an update of the Dogwood Park Master Plan of 2007. And uh, we did that. We've completed that uh, design or that master plan process, not design, but master planning process at this point. And we're pleased to have uh, representatives from HFR Design here with us tonight. We're also, we also have a couple of members of a uh, public citizen steering committee here with us tonight. We appointed a steering committee to, to give us input from the citizens. And uh, that committee included Dilcia Cowan, Jason McCormick, Michelle O'Neill, Bill Pardue, Rob Shabert, Phil Schaller, Brad Sells, Donna Simpson, Kelly Swallows, and Laura Wolf. And both Donna Simpson and Laura Wolf are here with us tonight. We appreciate their coming. Um, in the interest of time and not to belabor all of this, I'm going to turn this over to the folks from HFR Design here with us tonight. We have Jim Gillum, Kyle Dunn, and Beth Meadows from HFR Design. And I believe Kyle Dunn is going to start uh, talking here and presenting our plan for you. Thank you. Thank you, Rick and Mayor. It's good to be here, Mr. Mills as well, uh, and other members of the council. Appreciate the time to present our update to the master plan. As Rick did say, we started last, uh, late last summer, and we, through the process of three or four steering committee meetings, which were well attended by the members of the committee, and then in January, we had a public presentation. I know Dr. Womack and Ms. Sweeten were here at that meeting. We appreciate that. Uh, but through that process, uh, we have created our master plan. Uh, Jim is a te technician. Sorry about that. Jim's a technician involved with the with this. So Jim, why don't you follow up then with some of the specifics? Sure. Thank you. And I understand uh, you did hear this on Monday, but I know there's some people in the audience that first time they've heard it. So I'll go through uh, somewhat uh, give an overview there, maybe not in, in real detail, but um, one thing that we did discuss with the steering committee early on, and, and that's the nature of the, of the park and the current conditions and the fact that it's, it is a passive park and that was really the desire uh, of, of really the staff and, and what we recommended as well to, to keep with that nature. Uh, there were some amenities that were, were thrown out and, and suggested and, and we do actually have one that's on here now and that's, sorry for the jumpiness there, but the, uh, there's a fitness court on there that that was one thing that was, was mentioned that that's, that's obviously pushing the envelope a little bit with the passive uh, activities there. But what we heard uh, through, the, through the meeting really was, was shade at the, shade at the playground. Uh, we're showing on the top area just some ideas uh, as far as what, you know, around the perimeter with, with the benches there, actually adding some shade for, for parents, uh, we, we talked about adding shade for the, the structure itself, but it's just so, uh, I guess, so expansive there and being able to, to get footings in the ground to hold in uh, the shade cells uh, during that would be disruptive to the playground. Uh, the other thing we heard, you know, restroom building, and we are showing a restroom building in this area. Uh, the existing building is across the park, and that was one thing, you know, parents talked about is, is having the proximity there with the restroom building. So that was one thing we, we heard constantly. And then also connectivity from really this, the east side with the playground and the parking to the western side of the park. And I know the city had had you know, some plans in the past and looked at and actually went out to bid with the, uh, with the walking bridge. And so we're showing that connectivity. We're actually showing 
more of a, a culvert, uh, which could be fill material and, and then a concrete sidewalk across the top of it as an option. I mean, not, not ruling out a bridge, but that was one option that we, we felt like could be a possibility that could, could maybe keep the cost down. Um, as we go around, uh, here's kind of a little blow up picture, and I'm not sure if you've got that on your screen where you can see it a little better or not, but uh, that's the fitness court here. Um, you've got entrances all around the park, and that's one thing we want to try to do is, is up, you know, give more of an identity for when you enter the park. And, uh, you know, of course, all around the streets, uh, west side, north, and, and I guess I'd be remiss to say that one thing that really <laughs> brought this you know, project about is the acquisition of the property on, on First Street. And uh, <clears throat> so that's really where you know, I think the opportunity came from is, uh, is doing that. And so what we're looking at there is an event center with a nice gazebo where it could be corporate meeting space, maybe a smaller wedding. Uh, but that is, uh, you know, what we had in mind and that's what we heard, I think, uh, you know, coming from the steering committee as well. With that, uh, we, we talked about expanding and revamping the parking in that area to get, I think we were upwards of 15 to 20 additional parking spaces that we could get on, on that side of, of the park. Uh, and along that line, you know, with the expanded parking with the new police headquarters, that opened up opportunity on the west side of the park uh, that you know, could <clears throat> use parking there for the public as opposed to uh, the police vehicles that are there now. Uh, also on the west side as we looked at, you know, improving that entrance and relocating <laughs> the, uh, the rose garden to that area. The roses are currently, uh, you know, kind of the western corner down here by the, the uh, art center. Um, and, you know, not as really, I guess, uh, I guess not the best place for them with, with having more shade. Uh, this would open up and have more sun light for, the, for them as well. Uh, some screening we proposed on the west side uh, from cars and, and late afternoon sun uh, for the people in the amphitheater. And I think, uh, I know Rick went and <laughs> talked about also the uh, entranceways into the park, you know, crossing the street crossings. Uh, we were talking and, and proposing a raised crosswalk. Uh, you know, not that it's gonna, you know, really impact emergency vehicles. I mean, you can still go over them. You know, from the design standpoint, if you can, uh, you know, design the, the approaches and the, and the length of it properly, it's not like a speed bump in a parking lot. It's, it's just a raised platform that uh, really alerts motorists to, to the pedestrian crossing there at hand. But um, I think I've covered, well, we have also identified a, a trail and it shows uh, using mainly existing walkway and I think it comes down around the street and back around that we've identified as a half mile trail. That's something people want to know is, you know, how far they walked and you know, with signage, uh, we're able to, to identify that and, and help people with their uh, exercise activities. <clears throat> so as, as we, you know, this is really the, the master plan that we have presented on, on presentation board. Uh, what we are still working on is, is the formal booklet itself. Uh, which would have uh, a combination of all the meeting minutes and, and some of the background history that we've, we've accumulated through this time period, as well as cost, est cost estimates, I'm sorry. And uh, so I know that was one thing questioned during <coughs> Monday night's uh, work session. And uh, I'd certainly be glad to come back with you at a future meeting, work session, or council meeting, either one, and, and kind of look at that. But that's, <clears throat> I know, uh, you know, it's one thing you're obviously interested, everybody wants to know how much it cost. And uh, I think at that point, you know, we can, uh, you know, present this and, and go over it with Rick and his department and, and they can make ideas and, and decisions as to what's, you know, priority and what's, what's easier to do and, and take off the list and what, what are the bigger picture items and, and plan for those in the future. So that's pretty much it. If you got any questions, be glad to, to answer anything specific. And uh, thank you. Is there a motion to receive the report? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any comments or discussion? All vote. Thank you, sir. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Uh, seven E debris removal. Mr. Mills. Mayor and council members, I'm requesting that you authorize the city manager to negotiate and enter into contracts on an emergency basis with DRC Emergency Services and Thompson Consulting Services with respect 
to the removal of debris and or tracking and monitoring for reimbursement claims to TEMA and or FEMA, if appropriate, utilizing bids or contracts approved by other Tennessee governmental entities, and this is relative to the debris uh, in our storm damaged area. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. So second. Motion. A second. Any discussion? All vote. Five yes votes. Motion carries. Okay. That brings us to the end of the agenda portion. We have time at the end for citizens that would like to address the council on non-agenda items. Do we have anyone? No? All right. Council members. Uh, yes. Um, I'd like to thank everyone in the city and, uh, and all the departments that have done the 10 and 12 and 14 hour work days the last several days to help resuscitate this area that has been so devastated. I'd also like to uh, commend the Cookville Regional Hospital who did uh, uh, an excellent in taking ex excellent uh, plans for taking care of 88 people who were injured by utilizing their uh, emergency plan. Uh, their code yellow plan and they had uh, called out to all the physicians and all that were called came in and had more nurses there and they were able to take care of these 88 people. Some were transferred to other tertiary uh, medical facilities and some were operated in Cookville but uh, it was it just it worked very well. They canceled all the elective cases at the hospital and did a yeoman's job of taking care of the people in this community. And so I think we're all coming together and the, the city has worked, the county has worked, and people from the state have worked to, and people from the surrounding communities have worked to help the poor people that have suffered this tragedy. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to keep it short and sweet so we can get back at it. We've got a lot of work to do, but I just want everybody to know that um, the city of Cookville is still open, and um, we're, we're here for you. So, I mean, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been out there working. We've seen it. Um, it's amazing what the city's doing. You know, we've experienced a tragedy, but it is definitely not stopping us, and I've seen some amazing things come from the city. Not being from here, it's even more inspirational. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. You know, it's it's truly amazing what what I'm seeing out there. Cause it, and and it's it, there's grassroots efforts. There's city, county, uh, federal government, state government, um, utility districts. It, it's it's truly amazing how many different people come together. And I I just want to share one real quick couple stories. And that's it's just a matter of like. You know, I've heard many people from out of state say, after seeing what they see on the ground there, who've come in from out of state, this is the kind of place they want to live. And that, that kind of, that's the best thing I've heard in the last two days. And it, it, it just, it's, it's a lot of hard work and I appreciate everybody who's, who's working at it. Thank you. Um, I apologize for being late. We were having our um, final briefing. Uh, probably will be one tomorrow afternoon, but um, you know, uh, beginning Tuesday at 2 a.m., uh, this was the most uh, destructive and devastating day in, in Cookville history. Um, 18 of our citizens lost their lives, 13 adults and five children. Uh, I, I know Jessica here, and um, I had other friends as well, and I'm sure many of you did too. Um, it was a... Uh, uh, a very trying time uh, to work through that and um, the the outpouring of support has been amazing for our community um, it started immediately and has gone non-stop and has increased multi-folds um, the uh, there were so many showed up yesterday over almost 2500 2566 actually uh, showed up uh, to volunteer that to the point that we actually had to um, stop uh, and not have that today and there won't be volunteers there tomorrow either um, the power companies needed to finish their line work and uh, Twin Lakes had stuff to do and and other other issues uh, like that and just trying to, to finalize that there the count did not change today so uh, all are accounted for now 
that up that went up and down a couple of times today from one to three to two to zero and there was no uh, more loss of life thankfully um, we continue to have uh, multiple ways that people can help um, if you've sent messages to uh, mine or mayor porter's uh, emails or social sites and you haven't had a response we apologize um, i was receiving about 22 a minute and he was about the same uh, over about the last 48 hours. And so there's hundreds, uh, maybe over thousands that haven't been, and we tried to work through those as we can. Uh, there's there's uh, spreadsheets that have been formed. And uh, if you email in at all to um, help now at putnamcountytn.gov, those are all um, calculated and, and categorized. Uh, so that they can be contacted, whether that's donating food or services, uh, coming to cook, uh, <clears throat> uh, whatever that is. And so we continue to, to ask people to do that. 646-INFO, uh, 646-4636 is still active and, and being monitored if you have questions. Um, they're still doing, uh, the, the Cookville Community Center is the uh, uh, distribution point for all uh, goods for the people that have been affected. Uh, Jefferson Avenue Church of Christ also has um, their disaster relief organization here. Samaritan's Purse has arrived. Convoy of Hope is arriving tomorrow. Uh, just on and on and on. <clears throat> you know, the need, it, this isn't just a today or tomorrow or weekend. This is going to be multi weeks and months that it will take. And uh, most likely, the, the, the going forward, the volunteer situation will be done with armbands. Uh, we'll be getting information out, that, out to you about that, just so that it can be registered and tracked and, and make sure that the people who are supposed to be there are there and doing what they're supposed to do. A lot of, <clears throat> unfortunately, contractors, um, uh, there have been people that have come in and, and trying to take advantage of the area in some uh, building things from out of town and state and uh, so that's going to be stopped um, and so we want to make sure they're, they're coming back to do a, the assessment of the um, of the damage number amount that will be happening over the next day or two with drones and other things um, I was trying to update on everything we covered uh, the donation site that has been established um, it is through the um, Cookville Putnam County uh, Tornado Relief Fund. It's through, uh, the best way to access it is putnamcountytn.gov. That takes you to uh, a, a site that is very, very good that was done uh, locally and it has uh, some great back end support from the same organization that helped Gatlinburg through their uh, raise money th for their fires. And uh, we're very thankful for that. You can also donate through, uh, we have PayPal set up, we have Venmo set up. You can text Cookville Help to 41444. Uh, that also goes through the Putnam County site. And then any of the 19 locations of Bank of Putnam County. There's been about $145,000 donated so far uh, in less than 24 hours. Uh, and so we, we know and we've been contacted by many, many organizations uh, corporate citizens that want to make significant contributions to our community and we're committed to this money 100% going back to the victims 100% every penny will go back to the people that were affected and so that's why it's important to uh, we, that we wanted to establish a uh, an official place to do this not that there's anything wrong with people's GoFundMe's you can certainly donate wherever you want to uh, again, sadly, uh, there was, uh, after the Venmo account was established, there was two fake Venmo accounts that used our uh, uh, picture and similar wording and trying to trick people into donate to that. So there's always people that will try to take advantage of a bad situation. But at, at the end of this, I, I want to leave everyone in, in my thoughts after uh, being in the emergency operations center for the last uh, two and a half days. Uh, we are a very, very, very blessed community with uh, amazing uh, responders, and that includes linemen and hospital and police and fire and THP, an amazing community of volunteers. 
And so I would just continue to ask people to pray, pray for the families that are going to be burying loved ones over the next week and pray for uh, the responders that saw things and had to do things at 2.10 in the morning after the storm hit that you shouldn't have to do and, and try to help and to pray for our, uh, the healing of our community. And we're on our way to that. And I know we are and we, we're resilient and we'll rebound. And um, I just appreciate everyone who has, has reached out and continue, will continue to reach out and, and uh, make our community strong again. So. Mayor, if I could, uh, the funeral arrangements have been finalized for Jessica. Visitation will take place from 3 to 8 p.m. on Saturday, March 7th at Cookville, First Cumberland Presbyterian Church, <clears throat> Presbyterian Church. And on Sunday, March 8th, they'll have visitation at the church from 1.30 to 3, and the service will take place at 3 p.m. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, yeah, meeting's adjourned. <laughs>